Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In this one we're having a look at how to paint up the Plasmancer from the Indomitus box. Um, as you can see he's got no head, and that's because I've chosen to do this one in sub-assemblies as well, just so that it's going to be easier to get into the central, central part here when we when we paint him. So I've just got my, uh, my sub-assemblies off to the side. I've got this little uh, decorative neck piece and uh, his head just off to the side here. Again, this guy has been base coated in Chaos Black, followed by Lead Belcher. I used the spray cans just to get a nice smooth coverage on there. And uh, as we normally do, I'm just going to start off with applying some Neon Oil to this and the sub-assemblies, uh, just to bring in some definition and uh, put a nice coverage on which we can layer up some other paints. So um, grab your Neon Oil and get applying and I'll be back once I've about uh, finished this. That's our nail and oil wash now dry. You can see it's brought out all that definition quite nicely. So what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to Necron Compound and this is going to be a dry brush uh, all over the miniature just to re-establish the uh, a brighter metal and to catch the highlights. Uh, so I'm just getting some Necron Compound on my, on my brush and uh, wiping the majority of it off. And then we're going to make a start on um, just lightening that metal back up again and catching some of the highlights. That's our Necron compound dry brush done. It's just sort of highlighted all the all the edges and brightened that metal back up again. Now what I'm going to do is because this is a character, I'm going to grab my Stormhost Silver and just go around and accentuate some of the details, just like this battle damage here um, on the shoulder pads. Uh, just some work around sort of some of the highlights and uh, pointier bits on the on the fingers and uh, around some of the joints uh, just to make them pop a bit more it's nicer to go that extra step when you're doing a character model so I'm just going to grab some of my uh, my storm my silver on my brush and, um, and start my, working my way around the model and just picking out all the extra all the extra bits that I want to be just that bit brighter so I sort of like this bit of battle damage here just to try and make that pop a little bit more and uh, the top of this joint here and I'll be back once I'm happy with this guys that's the Stormhost Silver highlights picked up around all the edges as I said I just went around sort of all the knuckles um, and uh, sort of sharper details and some of the battle damage just to make it pop a bit um, now what I'm going to do is sticking with the Stormhost Silver uh, just going to sort of edge highlight this entire decorative row bit, try and pick out as much of that detail neatly uh, with the side of my brush. This might be a bit time consuming, um, but I'm hoping the end result uh, with what I've got planned for this, uh, it, it will work out quite well. Um, but I'll be back once that's done. That's the edge highlight of Stormhouse Silver done around all these uh, panels now, and I also did his uh, little crest piece here as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to a uh, contrast paint called Magos Purple and uh, I'm just going to put a thin coat of this Magos Purple all over these uh, decorative bits and on the insides as well uh, and don't forget to do his sort of decorative bit as well and I'm hoping that the Magos Purple will just tint these ever so slightly purple and that our, um, our highlights will uh, sort of pop through giving quite a nice effect so um, just start applying that Try and keep it smooth, keep the paint moving, and uh, I'll be back when when I'm done. That's the Magos purple now done. You can see it just sort of tinted the uh, the silver, that sort of nice purple colour. It is a bit stronger in real life than it is on the camera, um, but I quite like the effect that's given. And uh, that's the his uh, decorative front front plate bit. So next what we're going to do is we're just going to start blocking in uh, some black. So grab your bag of black and uh, I'm going to be doing his uh, this cable that runs uh, up his centre here. I'm going to be doing the handle to his staff. Uh, I'm going to be doing all these central bits. Um, so you see, you see, you see he's got uh, these bits. If I can try and actually get that in shot. These bits uh, I'm going to be doing in black um, and then also 
on uh, on this I'm going to be doing this bit just painting all that in black as well so uh, I've thinned down some bad and black to the side here already and uh, just going to start basing that in that's our bad and black blocked in you can see I've just done the star the sort of decorative bits the uh, casing bits up here as well and then uh, as I said the uh, decorative piece the front there as well so next it's time to highlight that black so we're going to start off with uh, with the eshing grey and uh, what we're going to be doing with this is just sort of catching where the highlights would hit on the inside here sorry guys it's a bit dark uh, on the inside here and then we're just going to go around uh, all the sort of uh, bevels on the uh, on the staff um, around the edge of this you should be able to catch that with your um, with this edge of your brush I wouldn't worry about uh, doing any highlights on these bits and then uh, don't forget to do um, the highlight on the black on the sort of decorative chest piece as well so I've got my ashen grey uh, just thin down on my palette here and uh, it's just going to be a case of coming in and sort of catching some of these highlights so it's just going to be in this bit where the light would catch um, and run the staff and the decorative bits um, I'll be back once that's done that's our eshing grey highlights done so I've just caught the uh, where the light would catch on the cable there and I've gone around all the bevels on the, on the staff like I said and then I've also done round uh, these bits here. I've also just added so like a, a bit of a sheen down the uh, down the staff. I don't know if you can make that out, um, but it's just something a bit extra just because the this guy's a character. But up next, I've just got some dawnstone uh, thinned down to the side here, and what we're going to do now is just uh, a couple of spot highlights, as I say, because this is a character. So we're just taking it a tiny step further, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of go around and where the light catches the most, just apply. A uh, bit of the stone, so it's so like just on the tip of this cable here. Just going to apply a bit of dawnstone, and then also at the top of all of these uh, bits where I've drawn this extra sheen, I'm just going to put put a touch of dawnstone just at the top here, just to sort of give the illusion that there is a bit of a shine. Um, but I'm just going to finish doing that. I'll uh, I'll also do all the um, sort of the sharp edges, the corners, spot highlight all the corners around here. Um, and then once I've done that, I'll, uh, I'll be back. And that's our highlight of Dawnstone done. Uh, it's now time to block in some of the gold details, and I think there's going to be quite a bit of gold detail on, on here. Uh, the bits I'll be doing gold are sort of these cap bits. Um, all this detailing uh, on the weapon um, and this crest piece. Uh, I'm going to be doing that gold, all this bit right here. Um, and uh, on on his on his face, that's quite a small bit to try and get in focus. But just this bottom bit of his uh, of his chin piece, I'll be doing in gold as well. Um, and the gold I'll be using to base coat all of this will be Retributorama. Um, and it's just going to be a case of uh, getting it on as smooth as possible. So um, I'll be back once um, once I've done that. All right, guys, that's the Retributor armor done. So just letting you see for reference, I'll grab this, so just paint that top bit. And then uh, as I said on his, uh, on his face, just painted his, his chin there. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to be washing the Retribute armor that we've just painted with Seraphim Sepia, which is a Games Workshop wash. So um, you're just wanting to Get a good coverage all over that gold just to sort of bring in some of that, that shading again and uh, give the, the gold a bit of an aged look. So I'll just be going around the model catching all this gold with the Seraphim Sepia and I'll be back when that's done. Right, that's the Seraphim Sepia wash on and I'm just waiting for that to dry and while we do so I uh, just it'll be a good opportunity to paint in uh, these details on the weapons here. Um, and there is also one on the front of this as well. And to do that, you're going to want to grab yourself some moot green, which is a nice bright green. And then uh, just a bit of paint on your brush and very delicately 
um, just sort of rub the paint across the the raised surface of the uh, of the detail. Just wanting to catch it. So I'll just uh, I'll just go around and catch these details with uh, the moot green, and then I'll be back. That's the moot green applied. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just grab a touch of euro yellow, uh, just to catch the sort of that central circle um, and sort of coming out from that central circle just ever so slightly to give the impression that it's uh, the decoration is sort of brighter in the middle, um, and it sort of fades out to that moot green as it expands outwards from that uh, central circle. So I'll just um, start showing you guys. So I've got hardly any paint on my brush at all. I just want to try and catch that sort of very gently, catch that sort of central circle, and then just come out from it ever so slightly. Um, I'll just work that in, and I'll show you guys what I mean when I'm done. That's the Ural Yellow done. Um, you can see it's just um, sort of made it look as though it's just brightened that middle bit up, make it look like it's it's glowing a bit. Uh, the Seraphim Sepia wash is now dry, so the next step is going to be to grab some Liberator Gold, and we're just going to go around and catch all the edges of all that gold work we've uh, we've just done, just to um, make the make the edges pop again. So um, you should be able to use your edge of your brush for a lot of this, so it shouldn't be too too fiddly. Um, but just be as neat as you can, go around all that gold, and uh, I'll be back when, when I'm done. That's our Liberator Gold highlights all finished now, so it's time to move on to uh, our Plasmancer's face. So what I'm going to do now is moving on to uh, Rune Lord Brass. I'm just going to be blocking in uh, the, sort of the whole face. I'm going to be leaving the eye and leaving this sort of very back bit of his head here, but otherwise I'm just going to be blocking in his entire face with Rune Lord Brass. So just uh, dabbing a bit on my old brush. And just trying to get a nice smooth coat in there, try not to get any in the mouth and trying to leave the recess around the eye as well. That's our base coat of Rune Lord Brass done, so we're now going to wash over it with Cryptic Armor Shade Gloss. Uh, and as usual, give this a good shake and then you just want to apply a very thin coat to it, um, sort of uh, watching out for pooling. Um, and we're just sort of doing this to get that nice sort of warm tone into the into the armor. I'll just carefully go around this, uh, watching out for pulling as I said, and uh, I'll be back when I'm done. With that Cryptic Armor Shade Gloss now dry, it's time to highlight up the face, and for that we're going to be using Canoptic Alloy. Um, I'll just be uh, not using an awful lot of this, um, just to sort of hit all the all the sharp edges, uh, highlight the teeth, round the eye, being careful not to get into the, into the recess bits. Um, and then once you've done that, we just got to sort his eye out, and uh, then the face will be we finished. There we go. So I'm just going to go around this, as I said, just catching all those edges, uh, and then I'll be back. There is our Canoptic Alloy highlights all finished now, so it's time to start getting that glowing eye painted. And to do that, we're going to be basing with Orthuron Grey to begin with. So I've just got some of that thinned down to the side. Now at the same time, what I'll also be doing is painting this orb here in um, Orthuron Grey as well, just a couple of thin coats uh, to get that in. And then I'll be watering down my Orthuron Grey afterwards uh, more than I normally would and just very carefully sort of putting it in um, these little gaps here in these sort of power cells uh, and then just neatening up the black as need be once I've done that. Um, but anyway, to make a start with that. So as I said, I've got some Orthuron Grey just watered down to the side here, just thin down. And uh, just going to start basing, basing that eye in. And uh, I'll be back once this is done, guys. That's our Thuan Grey done. Uh, I just wanted to point out as well that uh, while I was going around, I noticed there was this little chap here. So I just uh, put some of Thuan Grey on his eye and his orb. And then um, just around the back here, also put some of Thuan Grey on, uh, on those two sort of nodgly bits there. And what I'm assuming is this little sort of floaty power bag. Um, so now it's time to actually paint in the the glow itself, and for that I'm going to be using Tesseract Glow. Um, and uh, you don't need an awful lot on your brush at all. Less is definitely more with this paint. And I'm just going to go around and catch all those areas now that uh, we painted in Orthuron Grey. Um, 
Less is definitely more, as I just said. Watch out for pooling. Um, try and take off any excess as you're going along, and uh, you'll actually get some fairly decent looking orbs. Um, and I'll be back once I've finished that. That's all the Othu and Grey caught with the Tesseract Glow now. So what I'm going to do still with the Tesseract Glow is I'm just going to go around uh, some of the edges, just sort of layering in ever so slightly some of the Tesseract Glow to give a glowing effect to some of the orbs. Um, I'll show you what I mean with the little scarab down here. So with very little Tesseract Glow on my brush, I'm just going to very gently, very gently sort of move my brush towards the source of the, of the light. Just catch some of the silver, just to give the impression that the the orb is glowing. Uh, and I'll just go around and do that with um, all of the orbs and stuff like that. I'll just show you again on the on the back ones, so you can see how it's sort of just tinted that green slightly giving it a bit of a, a glow effect. And then these, what I'm going to do is just, uh, again, just sort of some of the Tesseract Glow on my brush, just delicately go around the inside here where I think light from the orb would be catching the armor. Just to sort of tint that, tint that a bit green. I'm just going to go around for all the orbs, do all of that, even on the face. And I'll show you what, what that looks like when I'm done. That's the green tinting done. So the next thing I'm going to do now is actually start base coating in the uh, the base color for the weapon blade and the sort of weapon generator um, coils uh, here around, around this part of the weapon. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to be using uh, a Caliban green. So I've just got some of that thinned off to the side here. And now we're going to try and get some nice, thin, smooth coats on here because we want this to be nice and smooth. Um, I'm just going to start basing in those colours with uh, with Caliban green. So I'll be um, be back once that's done, guys. Right, there's a couple of thin coats of uh, Caliban green just to get a nice smooth layer. What I'm going to do is those bits we've just done Caliban green. I'm just going to give them a wash uh, now with uh, Nelm oil, um, just to darken down the recesses again, give it a bit of depth. Um, so I'm just loading some of that onto my brush. You don't want to flood the area. You want to be careful of. Uh, uh, the sort of details you've already painted in, but I'm uh, just going to go around now and um, paint uh, some non oil onto those areas of Caliban green that we've just uh, we've just done. So I'll just go around and do that, and I'll be back when I'm done. All right, while that wash of non oil dries, uh, I'm just going to take the opportunity now to pick out this um, skull. Um, so uh, to to do that, we're going to start off with some Ushabiti bone. I'll just thin down on the side here. Um, reason why I'm showing you guys this is because um, how you might want to base your Necron is going to be different to me. So uh, I'll take the opportunity to do this now. Um, as I normally sort of do this sort of thing when I'm actually basing. But as you might be doing a different base to me. Um, Anyway, I will be back once this is done. With our Ushabiti bone now based in and solid and smooth, I'm just going to grab some Agrax Earthshade and give that a quick wash all over the uh, all over the skull. And I'll be back when this is done and dry. With the Agrax Earthshade dry, you just want to grab a small amount of screaming skull and then just go around all the sharp edges uh, on this skull on the base here. Uh, just to sort of make them pop a bit. And it's quite easy with this one, you can just use the edge of your brush as you as you go. And uh, by the time we've done this, the non oil on our weapon should be thoroughly dry, uh, allowing us to continue with that. So I'll be back once this is done. All right, we'll start back with the weapon's power coils. Uh, I just want to put a, another layer of Caliban green over those just to uh, bring the color back to that original Caliban green color. So I've got a sort of relatively small brush for this and a little bit of Caliban green. And I'm just going to catch the raised surfaces and leave the non-oil wash in the recesses. 
shouldn't take too long to do this, but it just means you're starting again from that calibre and green base comb. Um, just go around and do that. Um, catch the the blade and the crystal and everything on here again, just leaving these recessed bits um, with the with the nail wash on them. And I'll be back when that's done. All right, Caliban grain layer done. It's time to continue with the uh, the weapon power coils. I've just thinned down some uh, warp stone glow just to the side here. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, there's a bit of an edge. Um, I don't know if you can see it, if it focuses, there's a bit of an edge that sort of runs down the power coils there. So I'm wanting to sort of make that the, the sharpest point. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some of this warpstone glow and I'm going to go across all these raised surfaces and just sort of bring the lighter colour towards that edge. Don't need an awful lot of paint on your brush. Um, you can see sort of the effect that I'm trying to go for there. You might need a couple of layers of this just to build it up. Being careful not to uh, ruin any of the hard work you've done so far and then also sort of leaving a bit of the Caliban green across that far edge next to the glyph. And I'll be back once I've been around and done that on all the power coils. That's the warp stone glow done. You can see how it's sort of gradually getting lighter towards that, um, that sharper area just to the edge there. Um, we're going to keep on building up on that. So you want to grab your uh, your moot green, which is a nice bright green, and uh, we're just going to be doing the same process again, of um, drawing the brush to the just corner bit here. This time we want to try and leave a bit of that uh, warp stone glow showing as well, so you get a bit of a gradient going on. Uh, I'll be back once I've done this, guys. That's the moot green on those parkours done. You can see there's a bit of a sort of gradient from uh, light to dark on those um, on those parkours now. Now the finishing touch is just going to be to grab a small amount of thinned down Uriel yellow and then just against that very edge, that sharp edge that sort of runs runs down the side of the weapon there. You just want to try and catch that. This is going to be very awkward to try and do on camera. I'm going to attempt it. Now you don't want a lot of this at all. You're just trying to catch that very sort of sharp corner. You give the impression that that's where it's the hottest. And then you and that's the, the effect you get. All right, I'm going to go around the rest of the engine and do that. And I'll be back when I'm done. All right, guys, we're now going to be moving on to doing the weapon. And for that, we're going to be trying some glazing. Uh, now, I'm by no means an expert at glazing, but I do like to give it a go every now and again. And I think this uh, this blade is the perfect opportunity for us to give that a go. Um, now, what I found works best generally is 50% sort of paint, 50% water or medium, whichever you prefer. Um, just try and give you guys an example. So I've just got that thinned down on the side here. And um, you want sort of that sort of consistency. You can kind of see the color um, in there. And as you sort of just build that up, um, you eventually get sort of a stronger and stronger color. That might even be a bit bit thin, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but the thinner the paint is, the more layers you'll need. It just takes a bit longer. But it also means that any errors aren't quite so so noticeable. So let's see if I can actually get this to focus again. There we go. So I'm just getting some of that glaze on my, and uh, the paint we're using here is Warpstone, uh, Warpstone Glow. Uh, it goes nicely on this Caliban Green. Um, so what we're wanting is we're wanting um, sort of to get lighter at the top, and then darker at the bottom here, and then um, lighter at the top here, and then darker at the bottom on the side. So in one sort of movement, I'm going to leave a bit of uh, Caliban green down the bottom here, just with this Warpstone Glow Glaze. I'm just going to go all the way up to the top like that. And then on the top bit here, I'm going to leave this sort of dark bit at the top, and then go in one movement down, 
as much as one movement as you can down to the bottom. And I'm trying to draw off as much of that sort of pooling as possible. That's going to be quite a few layers. Um, but let each one dry between. And uh, you should find that the colour starts to build up. It might be a few layers before you even notice a difference in the colour. But you should then start getting that nice um, sort of graduation between the between the colours. And this up here is dry now, so we can give um, give that another go, like that, and then down the bottom here. like that and just sort of collect that pool and collect that pool there we go and just keep doing that and your color will build up um, maybe if you don't make your glaze quite so as mine it won't take quite so many layers um, but I'll be back when that's done and go with a bit of patience and many layers you'll end up with something that looks remotely like that now as I say I'm no blending or glazing expert but uh, it doesn't look too bad um, so now we're going to move on to a glaze of moot green and we're going to do exactly the same thing but just start uh, slightly further up so you leave some of your warp stone glow shown um, so I've created the glaze just off to the side here of moot green and um, just test that. Yeah, that looks right. And uh, then it's just going to be exactly the same process. Just uh, like let's get that to focus for you guys. There we go. Up, uh, just starting slightly further down. And just glazing that um, moot green in there. So collecting the pooling. And uh, I'm just going to go around the miniature on all these glazed warpstone glow edges and do this and I'll be back when I'm done. If you stick with that moot green glaze enough you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Um, we're sticking with the moot green still but um, not thinned down quite so much now because we're going to be doing some, some edge highlighting. What we're doing with the moot green now is just uh, catching all the edges um, around the around the blade even on the, the crystal and stuff. Um, so just loading up my brush and uh, this should be relatively straightforward hopefully it's just a case of catching all the edges around the entire blade um, and then need the outline in the bevel as well and I'll be back once that's done that's the edge highlight of moot green done uh, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to spot highlight the very corners just to make them sort of look real sharp uh, and to do that we're just moving back to our Euro Real Yellow um, and as I say just pretty much just spot highlighting uh, the very sharp edges just like the corners here on the um, on the crystal the corners of the blade just to give them a bit of a sheen. And I'll be back once I've done this, guys. There's the spot highlights done, and that's your miniature complete. Well, apart from um, putting it together. So what I'm gonna do is start removing this sort of protective blue tack that I've had um, stuck to it. And uh, I will be back once he's assembled. And that's your plasmats are done. Uh, all you need to do is base him. I recommend basing him how, um, how you base the rest of your Necron army. I'll base him how I've uh, based mine. I've got a link that you can follow to um, to watch how I base my Necrons. Um, I will I will just get that done and then I'll be back with the final product. And there you have it. Plasmancer is all based and ready for the tabletop. Um, I hope this video was was enjoyable. A bit more advanced with uh, painting the weapon than um, than I thought we were going to go. But I just really fancied uh, glazing that because I do like my Necron weapons to stand out a bit. Um, if you've got any value at all out of this episode, I would hugely appreciate you uh, you drop the channel a like. And uh, if you're interested in more Necron painting tutorials, data sheet reviews, uh, just Necron chat in general, 
and please consider giving the channel a subscription. Uh, until next time guys, thanks a lot, bye.